morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Greg Wallace here, dropping in on your hope that everybody is doing just fine Saturday morning. So you know what that means. This is Saturday Business Principles. This is where we're going to talk about principles of business. We're going to take a unique approach to that today. But before I get into that, I just want to remind you, if you haven't gotten book 20, Critical Mass, the first book in a six-book series, my 20th book published, Critical Mass, is about accumulating the, the mindset, uh, the approach, strategies, the state, and so much more that is necessary to achieve higher levels of success and how you define success, which is extremely important. Uh, I think standardized and universal ideas of what success is, is something that really hinders a lot of people because you tend to judge yourself based on uh, the current situations and circumstances of other people. I think you have to look inside to really feel and understand what success is. I think you have to set the standard for your life, not based on what other people are doing or what other people think what your passion is and where you want to go and what you want to do in this world, how you want to be remembered. But if you haven't gotten this book, uh, order the book. Um, uh, for those of you who have been ordering, thank you. For those of you who have been pre-ordering the next book in the series, which is coming soon, I promise. Uh, the book, I Am, The Power of Human Declaration, A Personal Declaration. Um, Thank you. Uh, definitely. I'm just like thrown by what that book is going to do, I believe, for a lot of people. Uh, again, I want to thank the people who are buying. I think we've gotten everybody that has purchased Squared Away. If you have ordered a book and you have not received it, please email us so that we are aware of it because we're showing our list fulfilled. Uh, doesn't mean that it is because there are a lot of things, way that things can fall through the cracks. We're trying to just make sure nobody has been missed. With that being said, look, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, put this back up here. Look, you've probably heard me say on more than one occasion that success in life, in business, in finance, uh, in, 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 in anything you're doing, marriage, uh, but let, let's focus on business since this is business principles. Success in business is 80% here and 20% in the mechanics, the strategies, the plans, and all of the things you hear people talking about all day long, every day, you know, you know marketing, business plans, uh, projections, uh, all of that stuff, you know, understanding strategies, uh, market analysis, and all the stuff that goes off into business, right? That's 20% of it. 80% of it is here. How you see yourself, where you're focusing, what state are you in predominantly, how you are approaching your new ideas, how are you approaching your goals, how are you approaching your position in your market, in your industry, how are you dealing with the anxiety and the fears that can be presented by moving into new areas, which are absolutely necessary to grow your business? You can't stay only where you know. You can't stay only where you're comfortable. If you're comfortable, you're not growing. And that's in any area of life. If you are comfortable, you are not growing. You are growing when you move into areas where things are new, things are discoverable, things are in, in many instances, scary. So I want to talk about that. Many people get stuck because they fold to their fears. They let the fear of fear destroy them. I, I, um, I heard someone say one time, when you travel to the center of fear, you find that there's nothing there but fear feeding on itself. It starts out small, but if you don't check it, if you don't engage it, if you don't challenge it, if you don't meet the dare of fear, it starts to grow and the fear gains strength, momentum, and power in your life and it will paralyze you and it will hold you back. You have to be willing to engage fear or you will be dominated by fear. And so there are a couple of things I wanna to talk to you about. The first thing that I've learned about fear is that the thing you fear the most you ultimately end up having to face or you sit back in this little corner 
and live your life in fear. I had to face <clears throat> the two biggest fears. For whatever reason, I've never had a fear of dying. This got me in some pinches in my life, but I, I, that I don't fear. Uh, matter of fact, I just posted something saying, it's not death that I fear, it's now not living is a major concern to me. I don't fear it because I won't, get, I won't allow it to happen. I'm going to live my life, I'm going to live. I'm not gonna live in fear, I'm not gonna let fear guide my decisions. I'm going to live my life to the fullest. I'm going to die on E because I lived on full. That's, that's a given. So, you know, that's taken care of. I never really had that fear. And, you know, and, and just, just being able to go out and try things, I've always been that person that wasn't afraid to try things. So I experienced a lot of things early in life that people may, may or may not experience in their lifetime. But the, here's the crazy thing. My first true encounter with fear in the sense that it was driving me or, or, or really like dominating my thought processes was after I achieved success. It wasn't, it wasn't anything I ever thought about until I reached a certain level of success and I experienced life at a level that I never wanted to abandon. At that moment in my life, you know, this is the life. That's how I thought then. I think differently now, but that's how I thought then. You know the things I had the things, and you know, and and, and all that all all that goes along with the things. And so I'm living this life, and I'm and I've got two fears. First fear was losing it, having had it, and then losing it, and going back to what I considered at that time being normal. Pay attention to the mindset. Pay attention to the mindset in, 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 in the synopsis. So that was the first fear. The other fear was even greater. The other fear is losing it and losing it in such a catastrophic and devastating manner that I become homeless. And so that fear drove me. Now, on, on the outside looking in, initially it looks like the fear had purpose, and you, and you, if you're gonna deal with fear, you you do have to give fear purpose. You've got to say, okay, what am I gonna do with this fear? Because it's there. It's not like I can pretend it's not there, and it's impacting me. Can I give it purpose? Can my fear drive me? And it can. And my fear drove me. My fear drove me. I'm up every morning before most people are turning over. I'm up every day, I'm grinding, I'm making calls, I'm doing deals, I'm putting things together, I'm stacking ends, I'm, I'm stacking ends, I ain't going out like this, I'm stacking ends, I'm, I'm stacking for the rest of my life and I'm thinking it's no darn going way possible now that I've ever got to deal with that. But the fear still existed. It wasn't enough money that I could get. It wasn't enough things that I could stash away that could make me feel okay about this thing. It was like in my gut. And then one decision, another decision, boom, gone, gone, disgraced, gone. At, I thought I was at the bottom at that moment. But see, that was the first fear I had to face, lost it, wasn't done yet. Several years down the line, still looking at it, trying to piece it back together still not understanding the process. But the one thing I had was in, inside of me, remember I told you 80%, I'm not a quitter. So there was nothing that was gonna happen to me short of me stop breathing. Nothing was gonna happen that was gonna stop me from coming back. The moment that I went backwards, the, the comeback started. The moment that I failed, the comeback started. The moment that I appeared to have lost, the comeback started. Now, 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 now here's the thing though, wasn't done. In, in being aggressive in my comeback, I made some moves and some decisions that made me extremely vulnerable. Here comes the homelessness. Those who know me have heard this, have followed me, have heard bits and pieces. I've never, I mean, I've talked to very few people to the depths of where my heart and my soul and my mind was during this struggle. It was 2012. You probably heard me mention that year. 
as the worst year of my life. It was. I mean, every fear was faced that year. Every dark corner of my life can be connected in some kind of way because it either it prepared me for it or it was a part of it or it pointed me to the way out. But I was in darkness now. And I remember talking about darkness so much because all I could see was darkness. Everything that I feared, and it's like, man, okay, I lost it. It looks like I'm coming back. I'm being highly aggressive because I'm trying to come back too fast. I'm missing the journey. I'm missing the lessons. I'm missing everything because all I want to do is come back. I want to prove my, 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 my metal by coming back. And so I'm missing everything. See, the first, I tell people all the time now, and I'm giving you a little bit in, of inside information of why I'm where I'm at. Because I tell people all the time, the first half of my life was about me. What I can get, what I can do, where I can go, how I can live. But the second half of my life has been about my legacy. What am I building? What am I leaving? What will people know about me after I'm gone? How will the life that I lived speak for me? And so I was learning this lesson in 2012, this late, this 2012. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm, I'm like, this is not happening. It's not happening. But see, I was missing. I'm trying to get back to satisfying my own thirst for success and popularity and the approbation of people outside of my sphere because of how they looked at me, because of what they thought I had and who I, they thought I was, and they didn't know me. They wasn't for me. They were just wanting to be around because of what they felt I represented. And I had no stability because none of those people could be there for me. None of those people were people I could pick up the phone and call. None of those people were, the, were, 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 were people I could sit up and say, I'm having a bad day today, and they be there to console me, or at least say, well, we're going to have a bad day together, brother. None of, none of that was there. Those were people that gave me an appearance of being something and feeling something that, that, that wasn't real. It was an illusion, and I had to learn about illusions. I had to learn that, 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 that life presents illusions both as obstacles and as trophies. I had to learn that there was something deeper, something better, something more powerful than just simply the accumulation of things. I had to learn. And, 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 and so I'm going through this thing and I'm going like, okay. And then the darkness, and, and I remember, you know, as and I had evolved in my idea of God. I had evolved, I, I saw something so much more powerful than what religion in and of itself could show me, that there were no limits to this, 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 this concept. This concept limited what I call God. It limited, but what I found is, wait a minute, there can be no connectivity without there being an exchange. What, what are you talking about? I'm saying, see, 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 let me let me let me break it down for you. When you have a father and you have a son, the son is not only genetically connected to the father. The son is in all ways spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, genetically, and financially, at, in in the way of assets connected to the father. What what do I mean by that? just by being connected to the Father and having a solid, positive relationship with the Father, the Son has access to the assets of the Father, so the problems of the Son are not simply His, but by connection, the problems of the Father. And the Father has the answer. So I started to see that, but I had to learn in, in, in these transition transitional period, that there's something greater than even what I had thought. I had been growing into this for some time, but I, I was learning in real time how this thing would play out for the rest of my life. This was the crash course in infinite power and possibilities for my life. So I'm sitting there and, and, and I'm complaining. And, you know, I had a relative who was deeply into the Bible 
And I say the Bible more than I say Christianity, and I say the Bible with an understanding of principles, ideas, concepts, and, and, and a way to apply. See, a lot of people read the Bible, talk the Bible, memorize the Bible, but it has no, have no real true history of practically applying the Bible, understanding the principles, whether they're allegorical, whether they're uh, in real time or w whatever the situation is. But this person came to me and said, you, I hear you talking about darkness a lot as if some way this darkness has separated you from God. And I said, I just feel empty. I feel alone. I feel, I feel uh, I'm in this dark place. I don't know what to do. And the person says, you might want to read this. And, and if I'm not mistaken, it was in the book of Seven Chronicles. I could be wrong. It's been a while, but it says Solomon. I mean, Solomon is uh, talking, and he says, "God dwells in the darkness." And then he follows it up with, "Even in the gross darkness, does He dwell?" And, and, and wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me that in this dark moment, I'm still not separated from the source of the answers to the problems and the and, and the source of the solutions to the enigmatic puzzles and, and, and struggles that I'm dealing with. You're telling me that there's no place I can be on this earth that I'm separated from this divine intelligence, this divine power, this divine force. You're, you're telling me that, and, and then, it, 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 then you start to think, wait a minute, think, think, think. What have you been teaching? What have you been preaching? You're not only in the presence of God, God is in you. The answer is not only around you, the answer is in you. What am I saying all, what did I share all of that for? I shared it for this. I shared it for this. Sometimes you're gonna have to face your greatest fear to be moved and pushed into your greatest accomplishment. It's not going to simply be what you've learned by way of mentor, what you've learned by way of academia, what you've learned by way of experience, what you've learned by, learned by way of reading books. It's going to be a willingness to go the distance. It's going to be a willingness to push past fear. Uh, I believe it was Will Smith that, well, no, actually he was quoting Yumi. And, and, and Yumi says that God placed everything worth having on the other side of fear. Now that may be a will. I think Yumi, there's another quote uh, attributed to Yumi that Will speaks a lot about uh, setting yourself on, on fire. But yeah, but he says, God placed everything worth having on the other side of fear. You can't get the things that are truly going to give an imprint of who you are and, and send notice to the world without facing some fears. You've got to learn how to convert fear into power by giving it purpose. You've got to make it wake you up in a positive mindset. You've got to understand here that you're built for the battle. You've got to understand here that in your design is the answers to the enigmatic issues that you're facing. You've got to understand that here is the place where you are going to come to grips with all of your challenges and reconcile all of your mishaps and differences to produce the product of your purpose. It is here that you have to come to grips with who you are. And once you come to grips with who you are, once you develop an identity of who you are, then everything else starts to fall in place. No, it doesn't become easier. It simply becomes possible. I think at the time I was going through this, I only had maybe three, three books published, four tops. I'm trying to remember when, when your house is not a home dropped, because that was book number four. But somewhere up in there, uh, they were doing okay, but they weren't doing uh, what I would have wanted them to do. They were definitely not going to solely support me and I had other things I was doing. You know, it wasn't that I didn't have revenue, is that I was in a position to where I had an either or 
proposition in front of me. I could take this year and really gut it out with no truth, anything of my own place to lay my head and really put myself and position myself to make a powerful move within a certain amount of time. Or I could go for the comfort now and maybe prolong this, this, this outcome I'm looking for for years. And I chose the tough route. It wasn't that I couldn't have, it was that at that moment, it was an either or. Am I gonna move into my purpose or am I going to satiate my desire for comfort? And I chose, I was going to go to war. I was going to go to battle and it was some tough times. I'm not gonna get into them. Some people know, I've talked to some people, I've shared with many of my clients. I, I, I know some things and that's why I have an affinity, an affinity to the homeless, an affinity to people who feel forgotten, an affinity to people who feel alone. I know all of those feelings from a, from a different perspective. And the thing is, everybody that's homeless is not the same idea of what you have. There's some people who are struggling to make things make sense. There are people who are dealing with mental issues. There are people who are trying to make their dream come true. And the expenses of life is ciphering it, ciphering their resources. And they're making a conscious decision that for a moment, I'm gonna be on the bottom so that one day I can be on the top. And this has nothing to do with competing with anybody else or judging themselves. It's an idea that they have for themselves that they are determined to meet. One of the beautiful things I love about my wife is she has this same love for, the, for, 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 for people who are in this place. And we do things, and the crazy thing is, we watch our kids. And, and, and I've seen my kids stop in mid-stride, more than one of them, stop in mid-stride and take something that we gave them for them and give it to somebody they didn't know. We don't tell them to do it, but they've watched us. And they have developed a heart for people who have less. And I can't tell you what that means that right there means more than anything i've ever owned in my life but see it starts here what kind of impact it doesn't matter what business you have it doesn't matter the things that your business will allow you to consume at the end of the day what kind of impact have you had on the world how many lives have you touched how many people, when they hear your name, smile and thank God that they came across you? That's going to be the ultimate measure of what you have been to this world. Are you putting your imprint on the world? Are you? You know, I often sit up and I think, if I could have went back, and I know the decisions I made that put me in the decision, I mean, put me in the position that I was in. And I asked myself, if you had the opportunity, Rick, to go back and change that decision, would you? And without having to consider it for long at all, the answer is no. I'm not proud of poor decisions, but the poor decisions when I've allowed them to have shaped me. They have groomed me. They have molded me. They have made me stronger because I refuse to quit and I refuse to stop growing. So when I make a mistake, it presents a reality that shapes my intent for growth. I became better because I wasn't. So you gotta, you gotta understand, I, I, if I go back and I change that, do I ever become who I am today? 
Do I have the same vision for the future for me, my wife, my kids, and anybody that I can come in contact with? Do I have that same intent for my future if I don't make that mistake? And because I can't think it out like that, I have to say it got me to where I'm at now. I'm good. You can't get beyond your imperfection. You're going to make some bad moves, some bad decisions, morally, financially, entrepreneurially, socially. Hopefully not, but even some of you are going to make a poor decision legally. And the impact of the decision is going to start a movement and you're going to either choose to let it shape you or break you. With this, I'm going, I'm going to leave you with this. And I've shared this many times before. Many of you have already heard it, but the best lesson that my dad, my great grandfather, my dad, my heart, uh, my hero, the best lesson he ever taught me, and he taught me many. He said, son, sit down. I was 17 years old, and I lived for these talks. Well, most kids my age were, oh, my God, here he goes again. Oh, God. I literally lived to suck in his wisdom. And he said, sit down. He said, I did the best I could to teach you. But what I'm going to share with you today, if you can get this one thing, life is going to be so much better for you. And he said, you have to understand this, that in life you're in one of three places. This is gonna be true until you stop breathing. He said, you're either going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of one. You come out of one and you're out of one long enough, you're going into another one. It's, it's a cycle of development, son. It, it can't be uh, navigated around. In other words, you can't circumvent the struggles and vicissitudes of life. That's my paraphrase. But he said, you, you're going to be either going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of one. He said, and when you get in a storm, your first notion is going to be to find someone to blame. So don't waste your time with that. You do need to know how you got there, but don't waste so much time focusing on who to blame because 90% it was a decision you made somewhere somehow even if someone pushed you in it some decision you made gave them the ability to do so so don't get caught up in that he said your number one responsibility son when you're in the middle of a storm in the midst of a storm in the midst of hardship and struggle disappointment frustration setbacks when you're in the middle of it your number one responsibility is to come out of it a better man than when it, than the one that he said, if you can learn this, you won't even have to chase down greatness. It'll overtake you. The very thing you're hiding from, running from, complaining about is the very thing that's going to elevate you. Look, have a great day. Like I said, if you haven't gotten the books, get the books. Uh, I'm also got a couple of slots, and I do mean a couple uh right now that are open for one-on-one -on -one. uh anybody that's done one-on-one -on -one with me uh will tell you we have progress we make progress we do what we set out to do uh i have an unbelievable success rate with my clients because number one i choose my clients well and i'm committed to my clients i'm open to my clients it's not a one-way exchange with my clients. I use my life to show my clients what's possible, not because of all of this, but because a lot of this, the stuff down here, people can relate to being down. Not everybody's experienced some of the stuff that I've experienced, but everybody's at some point been down here. And when you can show them, I'm not different than you. It's just the distance I'm willing to go to climb out. I don't quit. I don't give in. I don't give up. It, I, 
one of the things I tell, I say this a lot. One of the things that I love when I go to speak at places that I've spoken at before, say more than once, and uh, I know that a lot of the crowd that was there the first time will be there the next time, like certain groups, churches, organizations, where you know most of the same people are going to be there. The one thing I know as I'm walking on stage is I'm going to hear one of my favorite uh, mantras, and it's simply no surrender, no retreat. No surrender, no retreat. That's how I live my life. No surrender, no retreat. Not going to give up, not going to let up, not going to shut up, not going to turn around, not going to step back, not going to give up, not going to lay down. You might knock me down, but I'm not going to lay down. And if you knock me down, I'm going to get back up. And I'm going to keep going. There's no quitting me. I'm going the distance. And that's this. I'll take a person with a mind that's set on right over one with a poor mindset and all the right strategies. That 80% will win every time over that 20, every time. With that being said, look, I'm gonna get out of here. You have an unbelievable day. Uh, I'm gonna get off, I got a lot to do. Um, and uh, this is gonna be one of those days. Again, you have a great day and I'll be talking to you soon. Live your life on full so that you die on need. That's my challenge to you. I'm out.